This lesson, we're going to be creating an exercise that's going to move a blue rectangle across the screen. We're also adding in a reset button, which is going to allow us to reset the position of the rectangle. Once it reaches the end of the canvas, the animation is going to stop. Let's go ahead and set up our HTML. So we've got our canvas element. I'm going to make an adjustment to the size. So setting it to be about 400 pics. I've already got a border around there and that's added in with styling within my style sheet. I've selected the my canvas element and added a border there. Uh, let's also go ahead and we're going to add in a button. This button is going to act as a way to reset the rectangle. So it'll just be a reset button, BTN. And uh, within the button, we're just going to write reset and we can close off the button. And I've linked it to, to JavaScript, so called it app5.js. So we've linked it into there. So let's make sure that the canvas element has loaded. I'm also going to add in a line break here so that we can have it on a separate line. So it just looks a little bit better. And making sure that the document and then adding an event listener. And the event that we're listening for is going to be DOM content loaded. And this is an event that gets triggered. It's an event listener that whenever the DOM content has loaded, so whenever all of the HTML code has loaded. So this will give you ability to put your JavaScript also at the top of your page. So right now I've been putting it in the bottom of my HTML. And the reason being is that we want all the page elements to load before we try to interact with them. So this will give you an option that you can take your script tag and you can move it up in the head section depending on how you want to structure your web page. So this listens for the DOM content loaded. Whenever the DOM content loaded, it runs whatever code we've got present here. And here we're going to be selecting the canvas. So we're using the document and get the element by ID. So we've got an element ID and the element ID is going to be the my canvas. So that selects the element into the canvas object. And then we want the ability to be able to write to it. So CTX and then running the canvas object that we've just selected and adding the ability to write to it. And that can be done with the get context. And the context that we're getting is going to be the 2D context. So now we're able to write to it. So let's set an initial position for the rectangle and we're going to be moving this position. So rectangle X setting the value of zero. And then let's update also some properties for the rectangle. So we can also adjust these two if we wanted to. So the rectangle width and setting the width to be 50 picks. And let's set the rectangle height and we'll set the rectangle height to be 30 picks. So that give us a rectangle. And now create a function. And within this function, this is going to be the function to draw the rectangle. And within here, this is where all the action and the animation is going to be happening. So setting it up and using the CTX, we're going to clear the rectangle. So this will give us a way to clear the current content off the canvas and setting the selecting the canvas width and then also the canvas height. So that clears the current rectangle content and we use the CTX fill style and let's uh, set the fill to be blue. So it'll give us a fill of blue for the rectangle and using the CTX once again, we use the fill rectangle and this is where we want to make the fill of the rectangle. So our rectangle X position and getting the Y position. So let's set that to 100 because we're not going to be moving it on the vertical quite yet. And then we've got the rectangle width and the rectangle height that we're going to be using for the fill. So that will draw the rectangle. Uh, let's take the rectangle X and we'll add two to it. So this is going to move the rectangle over to the next frame. We check to see if the rectangle X is going to be less than the canvas width. And that means that uh, we're able to draw the rectangle and we're going to be using the request animation frame. So this gives us ability to do an animation and then we do the rectangle. 
So we do a call back to the function within itself. And this is going to be just calling back that same function. So it's going to create the ability to run the animation. So next up, what we want to do is we want to draw this rectangle. So let's see what happens now when we draw the rectangle. And this is going to kick off the function to draw the rectangle within the page. Let's see if we're throwing any errors within the console. Looks like we do have an error. So the Rx, so that should actually be a C. And now we see that we've got this blue rectangle moving along the page. When it hits the end, that's when it ends the animation. And this is where we kind of have the button do some type of action. And right now what the button will do is this can reset the rectangle position. So the animation has stopped because we've reached the end of the page, get the element by ID, and we're going to be selecting the reset button. So whatever we gave it an ID of, reset BTN. And let's add an event listener. So the event listener and the event that we're listening for is going to be a click. And whenever the click is initiated, then we fire off this value. So we're setting the rectangle X value to zero. So it's going to reset the position, the CTX, and we clear the rectangle. So that will clear any of the drawing that we currently have. And this is the canvas width that we're going to be setting. And then also the canvas height that we're selecting. And then we want to kick off the draw rectangle function once again whenever the reset is pressed. So let's see what happens when we click reset. It will automatically just reset the rectangle. And notice that it is going faster whenever we press the uh, reset because that means that the animation frame is running twice. Uh, so that's why we've got uh, more speed that's added into there. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to add the remove for the animation. So the request animation frame. And this is just going to be set up as an object. And I'm going to set the any move to the request animation frame. And then I want to do a clear the animation claim. So clear the animation frame and then a name of the animation frame that we want to clear. So now when I press the reset, it's just going to reset it and it's not going to have uh, two animation frames running at the same time. So you can add that in if you do notice that uh, you do see a speed up and you want to have a consistent speed. So you can clear the animation frame just as we've added it in.